Hey there, folks. Welcome to Spectrum Pulse. We talk about music, movies, art, and culture. And today we're going to be talking about the newest album from A Forest of Stars called Grave Mounds and Grave Mistakes. You know, there was a time when I was starting to get into black metal that I was unsure if I would be recommended bad acts or ones I didn't like within the genre. That's the funny thing about extreme music and one reason why critics who don't exclusively specialize in it tend to hand out higher scores more often to the bands we cover. Most cause it's a little more organic. The good stuff rises to the top and picks up popularity. The bad or incompetent stuff just doesn't. It winds up in the pits of obscurity. Most people don't hear it and those who do don't really recommend it. Of course, the big exception to this rules when a band slips into avant-garde territory and is simply so unique that they seem custom made for a cult following even if the quality isn't really there. And on that note, a forest of stars. I'll be very blunt and say that when I checked out their first couple of albums, I was not a fan whatsoever. And given my fondness for fantasy, or at the very least Celtic folk music, you would think they'd be somewhat up my alley, but with every single listen I found the slapdash blend of black metal, quasi-futuristic psychedelic rock, and the pomp neoclassical folk tones to be just a total mess. Yeah, the poetry was okay, but the progressions were underwhelming, the production rarely rose above mediocre, and nothing close to consistent, and the less I say about the attempted blend of male and female vocals, the better. Now, I'll admit they got somewhat better on each passing album, but up until this release, I would only ever call them okay for some good violin work and some passable black metal segments, and I have never been a fan of the vocals across any of their projects. They reminded me a lot of Diablo Swing Orchestra in a way, who at their very best were able to balance out the ridiculous camp with some genuine menace and some instrumental chops, but at worst could come across as kind of oversold and gimmicky, especially on their latest album, which is about as true about A Forced of Stars down to their fake origin story. And when I heard that this album was going to be revisiting sounds from their 2012 album, A Shadow Play for Yesterdays, which is arguably where their theatricality picked up the most flop sweat, I was happy they moved away from it on the album that came after, I was stealing myself for a rough listen. So, how did this turn out? Okay, here's the thing. The more listens I gave to Grave Mounds and Grave Mistakes, the more I understood the broad appeal of A Forest of Stars. They are the very definition of a cult band relying on their concept and mostly unique genre combination to attract attention, and if you can get into their style and sound, you're not going to hear many other acts like this. I'll give them that. But for me, not only can I not take this seriously as I reckon the band is at least trying to be, I actually consider this album something of a backslide for the band, away from tones and a direction that at least had some promise going forward after the 2015 album. In short, if you're looking for a black metal album that absolutely turned me off and that I won't recommend, it was this. Only spared from being an outright disaster by a few scant moments, and even they cannot save this album from being pretty bad in its own right. Mediocre at best, but really, I did not enjoy this. But you know what? Let's focus on the good moments, shall we? Now I have a lot more to say about the vocals in a little bit, but when it comes to the female singing, it is passable. Rarely layered in a way to have all that much presence or firepower within the mix, or really just more than a symphonic backdrop, and I really wouldn't say it's all that impressive regardless, it doesn't stand out much, but the one song where she takes lead on Taken by the Sea, it is the highlight of the album, hands down, it's got the most subtlety, and I'll admit that while the violin playing is rarely all that exceptional, an issue of arrangement and composition, and again we will get back to this, I would argue it's mostly layered in a way that can complement the main melody line, especially in the back half of the album. It's more for added twinges of Celtic folk that promise a more textured album than this really is, but it's hard to complain about it or the acoustic moments that accompany it. Finally, while the integration of synthesizers and more futuristic elements in the keyboards, they've always felt a little weird for this band on songs like Tombward Bound and Scripturally Transmitted Disease. It doesn't fit with really any of the instrumental elements and the production seems to treat them like an afterthought. I will say I like the organ on Decomposing Deity Dance Hall. Hall. Again, most of what it really adds are just arpeggiated chords, but at least for the vague texture, it kind of works for what A Forest of Stars is trying. It makes sense for this brand of black metal. And that's about the limit of what I can say positive about this band. So let's start off with those arpeggiated chords and one of the most fundamental issues with A Forest of Stars. When you break down their compositions, by black metal standards, these are painfully basic and in no way justify songs running into the 9 and 10 minute mark. Especially 
especially with no significant solos in order to recommend any piece here. Drawing a quick comparison to an act like Valandusk, where the guitar work really is the biggest draw in terms of sheer melodic construction, a force of stars, they typically stick with basic patterns that rarely show any degree of progressive edge or knack for transitions or crescendos. Yeah, the tremolo picking is there, but it really doesn't go anywhere. Or to put it another way, the melodies get really damn boring really damn fast. And when you pair with a bass guitar that's mixed into non-existence and drum work that can feel painfully average in terms of delivering blast beats and really can sometimes just feel a little sloppy at points, it leads to compositions that don't really have much in the way of climax or striking hooks. And none of this is helped up by the production. And I'm immediately left with the question where A Force of Stars wants to take this sound and texture of this album. The band has been quoted as wanting to get a little bit more atmospheric on this release which apparently the producer seems to have completely misinterpreted as strip out any interesting dynamics or emphasis on the mix on any instrument, which makes the oddball turns to violins or acoustic guitar or keyboards not so much feel avant-garde or jazzy or challenging, just momentarily jolting the audience into paying attention just it's gonna do this thing for a little bit and then something else. And given that the compositional dynamics aren't really present in those passages either, they rarely ever succeed. This isn't a case like Between the Buried and Me or Cynic, where the abrupt changes in instrumentation is part of the point. It just feels a little slapdash here, almost amateurish. And unfortunately, this takes us to the vocals. And I'm going to be as blunt as possible here. These are some of the worst male vocals I have heard in 2018, on par with what Future was doing on King's Dead in terms of a what were they thinking response. And this is where the question of what A Force of Stars wants to be really rears in the forefront, because it certainly isn't playing to any of the strengths of the frontman, who at his best produced some serviceable growling barks that they're not exceptional, but they work for what this could be in black metal. What he seems a lot more interested in, though, is a low-rent Nick Cave wannabe circa 1982, with production that doesn't give him the theatrical presence or darkness or placement that he so desperately needs to sound imposing or potent. Not for lack of truth, trying on his part though unfortunately as the hamminess of his delivery approaches not so much knowing camp but a spook house villain from a Hanna-Barbera cartoon trying way too hard to be taken seriously which reaches its apex when he tries to push his growls into a higher register and only just winds up sounding wheezy strained and at some points damn near laughable and again this could kind of work if the album had a sense of humor or was willing to lean into more of the garish camp, but the frontman seems to be playing this with the flop sweat earnestness of the theater kid going all in at karaoke, unaware of how cringeworthy his performance is becoming and not helped by production or compositions that could elevate or save him. That's the genuinely frustrating thing. Given how formless so many of these arrangements are in their melody lines, the male vocals wind up standing out the most on the song which is about the last thing they really need is more attention. And I can't tell you how much this does a disservice to the songwriting and the lyrics. And again, let me try to give this band some vestige of credit as it's clear they're leaning into a style of some heightened theatricality, caught up between the Victorian Puritanism and a world sliding into debasement with all the manic pomp on the verge of madness that they can possibly muster. And you know what? Given the right frontman or producer that could give this project some guts or groove or genuine firepower, that that's not a terrible premise, but it's significantly undercut by how flat out ridiculous some of the writing can feel. This ties back to the integration of more modern elements in the instrumentation in trying to preserve the veneer of the vermissimilitude of the band that maybe they shouldn't feel so as ready to swear with a distinctly modern style for emphasis as they are, especially with this brand of delivery. I mean, I'm not against cursing in principle, but it feels like a lazy crutch for a group where the writing can otherwise feel so overwritten and kind of fitting to the time. And when you start picking out some of the more ridiculous lines, even with the cheap excuses that they're not supposed to make much sense in the throes of madness, it's damn near hard not to consider parts of these parody, which seems to be the last thing the band really wants, especially when we get more serious cuts like Taken by the Sea. And if the band trying to make some sort of thematic point surrounding how Victorian decadence and nihilism mirrors our own in the common age, well, it's a slapdash parallel for one, especially in comparison with previous albums that kind of did it a little better, but more to the point, the thematic ambition underscores just how badly the execution serves it. If they're trying to play it straight, it doesn't come across as such, and just gets kind of laughable. But as a whole, 
Look, I get that there's an audience for a force of stars who are more appreciative of the theatrical folk, black metal, psychedelic rock, futuristic combination. They're trying to go here, let's call it avant-garde for whatever it is. But forget the bands that do the sound better with a greater sense of cohesion. I can't even say this rises to the best of their discography. The production is flat, the compositions are overlong and really underwhelming, and for as much as the lyrics want to inspire emotional investment, the vocals, they just flat out kill it. For me, it's a 4 out of 10, no recommendation. And you know what, if anything I describe sounds interesting and you've got an hour to kill for 8 songs, I don't know, give it a shot. Can't promise you won't have a migraine afterwards though, so you've been warned. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching. I'd like to like and subscribe, I'd be more than grateful. I know I promised 21 Pilots, they're coming up next, just stay tuned for that, but this did not work for me at all. But I know they've got a cult following, so there's the poll up there for y'all to tell me how wrong I am. And if you want to buy or stream the album, links are down there below. Beyond that, anything else I might be able to do to improve my presentation, I'm all ears. And if you guys want to get involved in supporting this channel or help out in terms of any records coming up my schedule, link to my Patreon right over there. Where three times a week you guys get to vote on my schedule, and once a week for the higher tier contributors, you guys get to add albums, movies, or even a top 10 list to that schedule. More details right over there. If you want to see my schedule, it's on my Instagram, link down there below. But till then, I'm Mark, you're watching Spectrum Pulse, and I'll see you next time.